Hello again, everybody. I'm Jamie. And I'm John. And this is the EAP Society Quick Take Tuesday, where we take a quick take look at a single release or something or story, something that's a little too short for our main channel content. And we've been looking at the Essential Elvis series. We've been looking at FTDs. We've been looking at a lot of different things. And today we are looking at the classic album series. After they'd been doing some of the stuff that we'd been seeing, which is essentially Essential Elvis continued right the continuing adventures of essential elvis <laughs> right yeah. uh they decided to do this um this was an attempt to kind of put masters and outtakes sort of together with the idea being that all a previously released outtakes and then some more right. would be put out. And it's kind of like doing, even though Sony was not in the picture at this point, it's like what legacy editions of albums traditionally are. Yeah. It's not what they are for Elvis because of this, probably. Yeah, I would say that's true. But this is the what you this is the closest thing to a legacy album in the Elvis world. Yeah, I, I would say that's true. And and they're they're really cool. The concept is incredible. Um I was still frustrated because it wasn't complete sessions, but you know we'd get to there eventually. And uh, but I mean the format, the, the format's size, really nice. Yeah, the size of the format is just really cool. And so we're gonna go through and show you. I don't like how fragile the actual construction material is in this oh, gatefold format. I agree. They often arrive with bent corners, but I do like the size and I like the concept. Yep. If they had done like the same size, but had like a pullout thing with the CDs yep. and a hard case or a more, you know, cardboard style case mm -hmm. with the album cover, I think that would have been ideal. I agree. I completely agree. And you see when you take the CD off, They've got the actual record label underneath. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this is kind of a sort of albumish reproduction. And there's a weird thing because Follow That Dream is incorporated in Europe, mm -hmm. they can't use the Nipper logo on the actual discs. They can show it huh. like when they're showing the record label because that's a picture of an historic product. Right. But they can't use it in their marketing, which is one of the kind of tragic things yeah, about those. Fascinating. So, and the booklet, I tell you what, I'll go through the booklet and you tell the, tell the good folks at home what's on this CD. All right. Start off with side one, which is Beyond the Bin. Relax. Take me to the fair. They remind me too much of you. One broken heart for sale. Then we flip it over to side B, where we get I'm Falling in Love Tonight, Cotton Candy Land, A World of Our Own, How Would You Like to Be, Happy Ending. And then the new bonus tracks are One Broken Heart for Sale, takes two, three, and one, completely out of sequence, just to make Jamie especially happy. You're right. <laughs> then we've got uh, They Remind Me Too Much of You, take one, and I'm Falling in Love Tonight, takes one to four, so at least... Yeah. And that, you know, they've got it in order. They're still edited, but yeah, it's nice. And then we've got uh, Beyond the Bend takes one and two. Cotton Candy Land takes one, two, and four. How Would You Like to Be take two. They Remind Me Too Much of You take four. Beyond the Bend take, like three. take three. Take <laughs> three. <laughs> uh, take Me to the Fair takes four to seven. Um, I'm Falling in Love Tonight takes six. They Remind Me Too Much of You takes six and seven. Relax takes five, six, and seven. Happy Ending takes four, five, and six. Take Me to the Fair, August Master from Acetate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so pretty cool. Uh, the Acetate recording, I think, is not what they say it is. Mm. Um, and the quality is atrocious. But it and is. The quality is what it is. Because it's an Acetate. Right. Yeah. But uh, speaking of sound, mm -hmm. uh, we are firmly into the mastering loudness wars. Yeah, well, honestly, this like, is a, I find the soundtracks don't suffer as badly as the other material. No, they don't. The soundtracks are not nearly as bad as the stuff that was especially coming out on the main label, but it is way too loud. Mm -hmm. And the difference between this and the 2009 masters are distinct. They are. Yeah. 
Yeah. There's also, I think, a little digital noise reduction applied to these early soundtracks. I would say that's true, yeah. Yeah. Well, the the state of digital noise reduction was decent, mm -hmm. but not nearly where we are now. No. No. Now you and can... And it shows. You can apply it and virtually not be able to tell. Yeah. You could tell then. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But... One thing I'll say is the cover looks beautiful. It does. And... Something that Elvis record collectors will be familiar with is that these 60s albums that have red backgrounds tended to wear a lot hmm. on the original LPs. So it is hard as the dickens to find a copy of this or Girls, Girls, Girls or a Girl Happy hmm. that looks like it's in any kind of shape. Wow. Because that red ink would just wear off. That's wild. Yeah. Huh. On the other hand, you can find copies of Blue Hawaii that look pristine. Right. Huh. So, don't know. Fascinating, yeah. But really, really cool. And uh, so, yeah, just wanted to kind of show you the beginnings of uh, FTD. I was really, I was really excited to get this. Uh, at the time, we were kind of seeing, I, I was still seeing these things as, well, we're never going to get, complete so i'll just i'll edit these back where i want it was still frustrating to get takes out of order and there was a decent chunk of stuff we hadn't had before on oh these there's a good the chunk time. of stuff we didn't have yeah uh some of the things uh, a big bally who was made among among fans about some of the takes that we did have being edited differently than the way we'd had them before and there were certain things that from the pieces that we'd had before that were not in here and pieces in here that were not in what we had before etc 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 it's a theme. It's a, an absolute theme that sadly continues to this day when it absolutely shouldn't, but that's a whole other thing. Um, however, pretty cool. Very, very, very neat release. Uh, this whole series of classic albums, uh, I mean, these are treasured by tons of fans. And for a lot of folks that are not session collectors, it's really too bad that these haven't been maintained in some fashion to be purchasable today mm -hmm. that a lot of these have been, a lot of these titles have been deleted. That's kind of unfortunate. I, I do think because it would be nice to have these for the fans that don't want to jump for a whole session or the whole box or the whole box. Yeah. 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 I, I would like to see these, you know what? Maybe these in a smaller format like that, have them be available individually. May, maybe make it a Sony special product. That'd be cool. That you mail order for it, and that's all it is, you know. And that way, fans have access to these for not as much as they would go in the secondary market now. Sure. Yeah. So I assume eventually we'll get some completer sessions from this, right? I think so. Yeah. So, yeah. They, I'd like to see complete as opposed to complete error, but uh, well, yeah, I just you never know. I didn't know if this was one of those early '60s or mid '60s ones that didn't have well, there were tapes missing from. I don't think so, but you know what? You never can tell. Th this looks to be complete enough that I'm thinking no. Okay. I think this. I think they've got everything of this, but you never can tell. Would be interesting to see. But anyway, this is our quick take look at it happened at the World's Fair. A really cool release by FTD. This is the first in the classic album series. We're going to look at the classic albums and uh, as we've been looking at a lot of the different FTD releases. So anyway, I'm Jamie. And I'm John. And this is the EAP Society. Whole point is to make sure Elvis history is not lost to history and the perspectives and looks at all of these different things from when Elvis was alive all the way to today are available for fans now and in the future, no matter what your budget is, because Elvis liked to be accessible to all of his fans no matter what the budget, and we like to carry that forward as best we can. The EAP Society is not just a YouTube channel. It's a movement and it's people powered. That means you. And when we hit 20,000 subscribers, we're going to give away this really cool letter opener that was owned by Elvis. This is from 1956 and he owned it until the early 70s. How so would you like to be the owner of an Elvis letter opener? <laughs> Boom! I love it! That's fantastic. Oops, sorry. Got excited and just forgot the thing now. But uh, I love that. That's very cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so like, share, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, because when we hit 20,000 subscribers, we're going to give this, we're going to have a drawing and give this to one of our subscribers. It's going to be really cool. And uh, so get all the Elvis fans you can to come and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to see you all. It would be amazing. 
also, uh, we have a lot of huge plans in store. It's going to be great. Lots of plans in view. Anyway, that's a uh, wrong soundtrack. Anyway, uh, quote if you know what soundtrack it's from, let us know in the comments. Uh, but if you want to help even more, get us there even faster, become a member of the EAP Society. We'd love to have you. EAPsociety.com. Click on Become a Member, and uh, you can select whatever tier that you would like. Members get videos early. They get them ad-free. They get extra extended videos. They get bonus content, exclusive content, and all kinds of stuff. So we love all our members, especially our very own Colonel, Colonel Miles Foreman. Thank you, Colonel. We do content like this, Quick Take Tuesdays on Tuesday, and our main channel content on Friday. So thank you all so much. Really appreciate you. Love you all. And as always, we always say at the end of our shows because we mean it, because we love you all. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And always, TCB. My society, my society, here with all the friends I want to see. Society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society.